Hello and welcome to the fourth game of today. It is day number 25 of Starletter Star Series and it is season six. We are here with three people to provide you coverage today. It is my co-caster Kanaz, but before I let him speak, I'll also introduce our statsman, which is K-Pop Toasters, the one that you will not see and will not hear, but you'll see what he does. Kanaz, Mousebirds vs Navi, probably the blockbuster of today. Your expectations? Um. Hoping for another high aggression game from Navi with maybe some fun picks like Pudge or <laughs> weird ancient sacking, like ancient farming Marana, anything crazy. It's always fun to see some, just like interesting things like that with the Marana last game, where I never really had seen anyone try to do that. I knew that you could Ten do that with three. the, just because everyone's done it with Medusa, I guess at this point, in like pump games and stuff. But it was an interesting strategy, and it gave something for Moran to do, and otherwise an, a terrible, terrible offlane situation where she was never going to be able to get anything. But it looks like Navi's picks thus far a little bit more standard. Yeah, people. Sorry. But we will see Queen of Fame probably for Dandy picked up. We already have. We got the Nyx Assassin again, just like we saw last time. The bans were a bit different this time because Mouseports was the one to actually ban out the Wisp and the Visage as well, as we see that as an upcoming support. We saw Kuroki playing him in the previous game very deftly there. As uh, we have a Nature's Prophet and the Bed Rider banned out by Navi. And now the Darkseer and the Gyrocopter for Mouse Sports. So they're already looking pretty comfortable with what they have. We know Mouse Sports were picking up dual cores though. And Navi, they know that too. So they banned out the Kunkka while Mouse Sports banned out the Rubik in return. Yeah, just banning out Rubik against Navi usually an okay thing to do. We've seen Kuro on Rubik many, many times, though he doesn't seem to play it maybe as much as he used to. And I think maybe that's mostly owed to Navi trying new things out in the new patch. They've been trying some of these heroes that they didn't usually play. Like, we've seen a ton of Murata in different roles at this point. But uh, definitely a powerful hero that they don't want to deal with. And actually, Mouse Sport's going to be the ones to ban out the Nakes, which is somewhat surprising. I think Nakes is a hero that they like to run. Dead. Pretty heavily, Quake has played a lot of the offlane life stealer. Maybe just not feeling comfortable, confident with it in this particular game going up against Navi. No, of course, also since the nerf, it's kind of hard to steal offlane life stealer without that range upon the uh, upon the open wounds. And we still see the gen picked up. We saw that in the previous game, KP banned out all those jungle heroes for Navi, but this game they have got access to that. So Chen will be going the way of Navi. Mouse ports. They probably right, right now, either they want to answer with an aggressive trial and try to make sure that they get the best out of having Five Navi, having only a, a dual lane, basically, if, if uh, the Chen is in a jungle, or they want to try to pick up Navi also a hero that will go into the jungle and farm there. As we have a Shadow Demon picked up, of course, one of the most brilliant setup heroes that there is. Disruption sets up for a Rock Barrage for Gyrocopter if they want to do that. And we'll see what Navi picks up in return for their last pick before we have the last band come in. Yeah, they could probably expect to see these two heroes laying together with the Darkseer offlane at this point. And we'll see if Navi even pick Ten up a remaining. real offlaner for Funix to try and stand in that lane. Because Disruption Five is a remaining. pretty brutal spell to be against. It's very easy. It's got like good range. So Shadow Demon can just walk Ten in from seconds. the side and catch you with a Disruption. It always gives time for all of the heroes to just close in on you. And then you're in a lot of trouble, so makes the offlane a lot harder to go up against Shadow Demon. And Gyrocopter can farm and harass pretty well in that offlane situation. Flock, uh, Flat Cannon just so powerful, and of course with Disruption, if he gets close, he can get close and just rocket barrage you down very quickly. So they might be going for something that can kind of ancient or abandon in some way towards another lane. Uh, but with Chen already in the Navi lineup as well, it's hard to just pick a very hard dedicated jungler. Yeah, what we actually have seen um, Navi do earlier in the season is have Funic play the Queen of Pain on the solo top lane, and then still have Denny playing something else mid. So we might still see that. We have also seen Poppy running that Chen aggressively in the enemy's jungle, and then you'd have the uh, an aggressive trailer coming off from Navi. So the option is still there for them to also go for something extra aggressive, but they are right now taking their time quite heavily to decide what they want to be doing with their lineup. I mean, for them, this win doesn't really matter anymore people. You, I mean, they are not going to be in Kiev because they'll be Mouse in China by that time. time. To pick. Now for Mouse Sports, before today, they were on par with KP. They had 11 games played. Both have four losses. Both have seven wins. 
We already saw KP versus Navi in the previous game. We're not going to spoil that, but not but Mouse Sports, of course, they want to try and get ahead today. Both KP and Mouse Sports have two games today, by the way. So very important for them. And the reason that I say this is, I mean, they're even, but they're also right around that place where you either go to Kiev or you don't go. So it's very important that one beats Five the other, of course. Remaining. And today is an important day because both of the teams facing Navi, probably one of the toughest opponents that they still have to face before uh, next Friday, because of course coming Friday is the last day for the <coughs> well, for the group stages of Star Ladder. And uh, Mouse Sports want to get that win in. So it's a pretty big game for them on Navi. It's not that big of a game Navi for them here as they bad. won't be going to Kiev anyway, even though they're very high on that ranking as, as well. We see Spectre picked up by Mouse Sports right now. We saw her banned out in the previous game, I believe. Uh, the carry that Navi actually ended up banning out. So maybe a hero that Navi doesn't like to play against Ten and seconds. will now have to play against. Yeah, Spectre kind of becoming Five more and more popular remaining. as of late. We've seen Navi playing as well. I don't know if Navi will be fine with losing this game. I think this is one of the games they're probably going to be trying their hardest in. Mouse Sports are another TI3 team, and this is probably going to be one of their last-ish chances to really get a play in against them before going to China. So this is probably a bigger game than like the KP game where KP aren't going to be a TI3, so they can try out some walkier strats, and maybe that's why we're seeing something a little more standard yeah. as the lineup coming out from them. They're trying out something they would actually be doing against Tier three teams could also just be completely making crap up there, and Mouse they're just picking whatever they feel like once again. And Pugnaban also really Sky unusual. Mage? Something they could do they've done before in the past. Uh, Skyrath Mage can kind of get he does a lot of damage, but he has trouble against Spectre as he gets Taker and Taker, here, and can end up killing himself on Spectre very easily. But definitely Five a hero they could remaining. go for if it's going to be Gyrocopter and Bind. It looks like. With this lineup, uh, probably Darkseer offlane, Spectre as the carry, Gyro mid, and then a second support Mouse Sports is looking for. So they can really pick up anything that's going to pair up against Gyro well. Yeah, they end up banning the anti mage for Navi, and the Necrolite is the one that they go for. Also, something very annoying if you have a Pugna against that because you want to spam out your Q, you want to spam out your Death Pulse. And with a ward there, you can't. So Necrolite picked up. Now Necrolite has been given a buff, of course. You can't buy back, which is something that Spectre really values highly. If you have an Aghanims that is up on the Necrolite. But we're going to assume that Navi wants to farm that, that guy up. Because they don't have any secret, like, strong carry otherwise. But Spectre is one of those heroes that will just Ten save seconds. her haunt. For when she dies, then she haunts back. She buys back, haunts back into Five the fight. And you basically have to remaining. face her twice. If Necrolite is able to kill her off during the duration of that Reaper Scythe, that's not going to be happening. And that's that's no buyback for Spectre. So that's already a bit of a counter towards that. But the situation that I'm now sketching is a situation in a very late game. When you look at Navi's lineup, you're thinking, well, that's going to be mid-game. It's going to really depend on how fast they can farm with the Necrolite. They have got and a Necrolite and a Chen, very high sustainability. And once they start 5-manning, you can just have the Necrolite being very tanky, because he's the one that's supposedly going to be farming up. Uh, standing there, pushing his death pulse, and you have Hand of God and the mechanism helping out. You have a pipe, perhaps, as well, and that's going to be just really tough to chew through for uh, for mouse sports, even when you have a flak cannon from the gyrocopter there. Yeah, definitely. We'll see what last pick from mouse sports is, what they're going to do about it. Necrolite. His Agnum Scepter effect is cool, it disables buyback, and of course, he gets any kill that takes place on yeah. the hero he targets with it while it's going off so as long as he casts it on Spectre before she dies he doesn't even necessarily have to get the last hit because it'll credit it to him mm -hmm. and Mouse Sports going with the AA probably is no no we've seen this before actually Mouse Sports have run this before with Fada solo mid AA also one of those heroes that had that Aghanims buffed 17 seconds LT and of course yeah. I just said a lot of sustainability say goodbye to that if you get hit by that ice blast yeah, they've done the ancient apparition before, but I don't think they've done the ancient apparition mid when they had gyrocopter as a support, which is why I'm a little surprised to see this. They are going to be having to run a support gyrocopter in the hands of Cinderin with this kind of lineup, unless they end up swapping around and decide to go for support uh, anyways, but I think they probably want that AA to have the Aghanim Scepter ult, because that 17 second duration really shuts down what Necrolite could do in a fight. Ten Two of his abilities remaining. effectively do nothing once the Ancient Apparition effect is on him. Five He's not going to be getting remaining. the uh, regen from the uh, Sadist, 
And of course, he's not going to be able to use Death Pulse to keep healing himself up in the middle of the fight either, which makes things a lot harder for Havost as the fight goes on if he gets this debuff on him, especially if it's lasting, you know, almost 20 seconds. Yeah, of course, one thing that we also must not forget is that Kuroki, of course, is his previous team that he's facing right now. Um... Okay, apparently Black was asking why Kuroki is enforcing team fights or street fights between Black and a fight, like Black and a friend. My name Brody. This is his bro brother. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking trying at all. To... The, I'm looking at all this German. Like, oh. I, I can I can read it. It's very tough to translate. And first, because I have to read it like out loud, then I know what it sounds like, and then I know what it says. Because I, yeah, my German isn't that good. But oh well. Apparently, there is a fight, and Kuroki supports Black. Cool. Great. So yes, Navi, Dire Side. Kuroki on the next assassin, Puppy on a signature Chen, Dendi of one of the uh, favors that he plays. It is uh, the Queen of Pain with Havost playing the Necrolite, so he will indeed be the one to farm up, and Funic on the offlane. Clockwork. Yes, it's still going about fights, uh, like real life fights. Street yeah, I think fights. you're talking about Alex. That could be, because there was some issues about that earlier on this uh, this week. In uh, one of the lobby chats, yeah, Alex yeah, and, yeah. and Black Bruderschaft, <laughs> which is like brotherhood. <laughs> okay, <laughs> enough German, enough German. Black has played Sec Spectre once before. Yeah, well, that was yesterday. Okay, thank you. Five to zero to eight against Liquid. Not the easiest team, by the way. Twenty-three minutes GG and Black Spectre only the third time since TI two. By the way, people before that he probably has played that off more often, but since TI two the stats are. Uh, are recorded on the site that our statsman gets his stats from but uh, but yeah let's see if we can be as successful as yesterday we have oh you I will leave mouse points introduced for you because I already introduced the uh, Navi sorry there wait did you introduce Navi I thought you were doing mouse ports did I, I, get I already did Envi Navi earlier oh right well okay yeah yeah we were talking about Black, and I was like, oh, yeah, she's talking about... Okay, uh, yeah, Mouse Sports, uh, we're going to pause playing the Shadow Demon, probably going to be in that bottom lane with Spectre, who's going to be handled by Black. Mid lane looks to be Fata on the Ancient Apparition. Cinder there as well on the Jarek after. We'll see how long Yeah, he's he just going to ward. Yeah, I think he's just... Yeah, he's got wards on him. He's just walking out there. And then top lane is going to be Quakeva on the Dark Seer. Yeah, I really like the, the Gyrocopter support pickup. It kind of maybe threw Navi a bit off guard about what they wanted to do with their lineup. But Jericopter support is pretty nice. You have got high usability. His spells still do a lot like in early game, Rock Barrage especially. Flat Cannon as well will be nice with vote with uh oh well, you can vote by the way. Capital uh, case sensitive people. So capital M or N depending on who you're voting for. Exclamation mark vote space team. But Jericopter pretty usable hero in terms of uh in terms of supports. And, later on, if the game lasts long enough, he will transfer into a very decent semi-carry as well. Yeah, I don't know that they had this necessarily in mind early on. I think the Ancient Apparition pick was completely reactionary to the Necrolite. Mm -hmm. And, as a result, they wanted to make sure the Ancient oh, Apparition... Oh, Kuroki gets some Rocket Barrage in the face, but here comes a Vos helping out Surge! Haste. Doesn't get the haste rune. Kuroki will be able to get away. But... He will be able to run towards the base. Yay. Yeah, so I think it was all reactionary. Just they wanted Ancient Apparition to be mid to try and counter the Necrolite's effect on the game. And that's also their carry. So having something that makes him a lot weaker in the fight is definitely a powerful effect. And something worth getting. We'll see how long Cinderin actually hangs out here, though. He's still in the mid lane. And he's going to counter ward. Yeah. It was uh, obvious that he did place that ward. So Cinderin indeed in the mid lane might well, will probably rotate because otherwise, Fad, I mean, the reason that you put an Asia Deparation mid is because you want him to get that fast level 6 and fast utility. And you can't really allow yourself to have then someone else helping out there because otherwise that level 6 won't be as fast. And of course, Dendi will still get the levels as fast. So he'll be level 6 and then you have a very sad Asia Deparation because Sonic Wave really hurts Asia Deparation, not very tanky from the get go. Uh, then he blinks himself away from the cold feet. We'll be able to survive through that. In the meantime, we have on the bottom lane Funic taking a bit of harassment here. 
I mean, it is a, a tri lane in the end. It looks to be even a, uh, a quarter lane right now because we do have Koikfai in the jungle right now pretty far ahead as well. So it is not an easy lane for Phonic. And the thing about a Clockwork is you can't just go into the jungle and get your farm there. You have to stay in your lane. Yeah, what's really interesting though is Black has three last hits. Most has nine last hits. Uh, Black's starting to get some now. It looks like the creep wave was just held up. I don't and maybe I missed them stacking it up a little bit there, running it yeah, around. Yeah, with the cogs, you can you can oh, delay from the, your from the cogs. Yeah, okay. you can delay your creep wave very very much. Radiance but Black will still be able to take it up. And also, the lane is not getting pushed out in the end. The equilibrium still is there, of course, because of that fast pull that Mouse was able to do. And last hits, yeah, he will try to keep up with the Vost on the Necrolite because there is a Necrolite that's farming up here. I'm very curious to see how this goes. We have actually seen this before. As we might have actually a gank soon. No, Puppy's just counterwarding the counterwarder, that counterwarder, the ward that was there earlier. Yep, that happened. No one's allowed to have sight in the upper room. Yep. Nobody. But no, but this is also the last wards on this on the river. Like we have got one dire ward still sitting on the lane, even though nobody is there, just in case that darkseer wanted to be there. And of course, we also have one in the lane actually on the radiant side. So so wards are even. And of course, since you only have two wards at the start, like one set, two wards. Those are the two wards gone, from or one ward from each gone, so we only have those laning wards left until four and a half minutes in, then, then you can buy new ones. Top tower yeah, it's attack. a lot to commit uh, to this top ward when you know that you can only get one pack of wards at Yeah, one but they, they still want to take down that counter ward. Yeah, they countered the, the counter ward? They countered the counter ward, knowing that they there might there probably was not going to be another observer ward there, but... Well, they counter the counter ward. Five times. Holy puppy. Chen is the most played hero of him. 40 matches played. 75%. That's Radiant's very high. If you attack. didn't know that by yourself. That's very high. Yeah, it's a very good win rate for so, so many games. Like, we see higher from time to time. But yeah. it's usually like they played four games or something. 75% across 40 games. That's 30 matches won. That's a lot of matches. Yep. That's that's that is a lot of matches, and also Puppy is one of those of those chants that is actually very aggressive early on. So he normally makes a lot happen in the game. Uh, Kuroki normally supporting him with that with any hero that he plays. So we might see them trying to go for a smoke gank, even though now that they know that that uh, Sentry is there, they might not. But but yeah, we we could see them trying to go for a bit more aggression. Puppy, he does have one creep there. He's actually trying to st he's stacking two camps at the same time, so he's trying to make the best out of that jungle. And of course, also, it is a Necrolite that can clean out that jungle fairly okay-ish. Once he gets those levels up, he has got a Death Pulse that he can spam out on the Creep Waves as well. So he can farm okay in the jungle and take those camps and even grow bigger before they start 5 manning, which I think they're going to be doing at some point. Yeah, I would expect them to try and get aggressive as soon as they have a couple items up. Uh, I don't know exactly what we're going to see if host want to build on Necrolite. Not a hero we see picked up a lot. If he wants to take advantage of the new... Agnum Scepter, maybe he rushes that. I don't know if that's the best plan, since he's sort of playing the hard carry-ish role. So maybe Agnum's isn't his first item. But could end up going for it if he just wants the stats. It does help him quite a bit for standing in the middle of fights, which is pretty much Necrolite's best job in a, ga in a game, is stand in the middle of fights, spam Death Pulse as much as you do, hope that you can get all your spells off and the other enemy team dies before you do. Yeah, just, just staying alive is all that you need to do. And hope indeed that your enemy doesn't have more damage than you over that span of time that you stay alive. And of course the Asian Separation, perfect counter for that. So maybe 5 manning will have to wait a little bit longer uh, until they know that the Asian Separation is either dead or on the other side somewhere doing something. Even though on the other side doesn't really matter because it's global. Yes, I know. But maybe if it's on cooldown or something like that. But we'll see how they'll try and deal with that. Of course in the meantime, Black has caught up with last hits. He's 35 to 14, while Vost is sitting on 38 for 2. They're both not really trying to push the lane just yet, they're both just trying to, to continue to keep that equilibrium going, to just continue to get as much farm as they can. In the meantime, Fara in the mid lane is having a tough time, a really tough time. He's 15 to 14, he's able to get those nice, Radiant but as is Dendi. Dendi is actually 19 to 12, Radiant so he is uh, also not doing as great as you might think, to be fair. I mean, he's still not as high as I thought he might be, but that's because he gets being forced away by that kind of stuff. Nice cold feet again. But still, he is getting ahead here in this lane. 
Yeah, they're tr they're just trading harass really heavily in this mid lane. Oh, Dendi, there goes the spectral dagger. Black chasing him down. He might be in over his head though, and he has to go back right now. Dendi chasing him down. Here comes also Puppy. Tessa Faith will be there, but here comes the support. But it is Black still that will be the first blood. Cold feet, soul catcher, Dendi. Gets stuck in place. Is there enough damage to take him down? Yes, there is, but it is too late for Black. That is the probably the worst. Oh my god, bad manner, Dendi. That's probably the worst first blood that you could give. Yeah, they teleported gold to Dendi, yeah. basically. It's, hey, we put our ultimate on cooldown to send our carry across the map to your mid hero. Give him first blood. Like, mm -hmm. Dendi dies for that because the combo with Ancient Apparition and Shadow Demon is very powerful. Yeah. You put the cold, fight, the cold feet and then disrupt and attack. it'll pretty much come up as soon as you come out. Before, uh, oh, he gets another kill here soon, I think. Fada trying to do what he can before he goes down, though, but he'll, uh, he'll change kills. Still Dendi getting the experience, so both times that Dendi got a kill and Dendi died, with this, which is both kills that have happened so far, he at least dies after the one that he kills off. Yeah, this time his TP scroll is going to be on cooldown, though, because that was so quickly after <laughs> yeah. uh, respawning. So that's going to make him lose a little experience upon respawning as well. You don't... It's like... You're sitting there, and it's great that you got the kill, and at least you got the experience out of it. But he was the one who forced the issue. And if he... You don't really want to be giving up time that you could be farming and getting experience otherwise. Nope. And, and in the meantime, Fada's already back. Well, indeed, as you said, Dendi is not, because he can't be back yet. He has to run. And he's actually running bottom lane right now. He doesn't have a sonic wave. And I'm not quite sure what he thinks to accomplish here because Black, even though of course he just died, but he is still he is still a Spectre. He's got that level one in this version. Actually, he's got uh yeah, he's got a level one in this version. But he is pretty tanky hero, so maybe they're trying to find oh, if they find actually this guy, Koikfi, who is very low. Nah, they won't. He's already running back. They're gonna go mid. Three people mid for mouse right now. Let's see what they can do. They're gonna find Sinran first. He just walks up the hill. Here comes the cogs, and that's gonna be Sinran dead. Without even the cogs needed. I mean, that's just battery assault. Clockwork taking a kill. He's level 5 right now, almost level 6. In the meantime, Kuroki taking a lot of damage here. Might actually go down. Will actually get shattered there as Fada takes a kill. There goes the haunt. Dendi getting chased down again by Black. Trying to run away. Is he fast enough though? It looks like he's not, but he can blink, of course. He gets sent home by Poppy. Savior of the day. Again, an exchange of kills. It is 3 for 3 on the kill score right now, but this time... Well, actually... Black still didn't get the kill, never mind that. We have got the uh, Nyx Assassin that went down for Sindarin in the end. So, support for support. Yeah, but uh, Gyrocopter wants to farm pretty badly, so he doesn't. it hurts him pretty badly to die there. Nyx Assassin, like, it sucks that he dies. He's not level 6 yet. Or he is actually level 6. He got level 6 as that fight before he died. Yeah, right before uh, and tried to vend it away. So that's really good for him while Cinderin's not doing so hot sitting at level 4. No, I mean in terms of levels overall, level 4, or now 5 rather, on the two supports of Mouseport as well, Navi has got a level 6 support and a level 8 support if we count, oh, by Fada, if we count uh, Puppy as a support there of course as well, even though he's, he, he gets more farm than than the other supports on the side of mouse sports, obviously, because purely by being a Chenny, being able to farm by himself in the jungle helps a lot there, but still a pretty tough position for mouse to be in, they are behind on gold, it is Navi that is almost 3k gold ahead, though they have taken a tower, so you need to take that into account, experience grab going the way of Navi as well, especially with that kill by Fada again, Fada, I mean, he's level 8, doesn't really have that much items just yet, looks like he's going for uh, for some treads first. We'll see if he can get that. Yeah, and uh, Havos is actually over a thousand gold net worth ahead of Blank at the moment, and that's a pretty big deal this early on. They have the one tower, which gives them a little bit more gold, but it doesn't make up all of that difference, and that's because Black has tried to move around, he's died. Whereas Havos really hasn't even left top lane, but it looks like he might die here. Yeah, let's see. That AA old miss though, that ice bat, the haunt is still there, and locks him in position, homing missile there as well, and Black just comes in to take the experience and a bit of uh, assist gold. Didn't get the kill. Second time, third time rather, he uh, haunts in to try and get an assist. He does do that in the meantime though, Shadow Demon goes down in the mid lane, Dendi with the kill, with the haste rune trying to chase people down. Let's see who he finds. Fada. Fada. There's no Sonic Wave though. But let's see what he can do. The scream is still gonna be there. Cold Feet might stop Denny from going there. Yeah. They'll just continue mid here. With the push coming off from Denny, they might be able to take down this tier 1 tower as well. Quick fast sitting here though, so Iron Shell and Vacuum might be able to do something. 
I mean, shell creep's already gone though. Flare, Radiance trying to help out. Under attack. There comes a cooldown. That's all you can do as a support Jero cup to just lay down your spells and then move back a bit again. As Nyx Assassin is sitting waiting for a good position for the Vendetta. There he goes. The Vision comes in. He sees Koikva. I'm not sure if he can take him though. He needs more, but he will have more because in comes Puppy from the high ground. There goes the Vendetta, Impale, here comes the Test of Faith helping out and that will be actually the, all the damage that is needed. Puppy with the kill. Yep, enough damage coming out there. He has Test of Faith max now because he's a level 9 Chen at 12, almost 12 minutes. So Puppy very highly leveled for his support, but he didn't really need to move out of the jungle to help his carry at all. Pavost was up there completely alone in lane. And that was fine for Navi. They don't need to babysit Necrolite if no one's going to touch him in any way. So it allowed Puppy to get a lot of levels, allowed Havos to get a lot of levels, and that's the kind of thing that's dangerous when you're mouse sports. They had to keep someone down with Black a little bit because Funic was always down there, and they didn't really do anything to Havos early on. Well, in the meantime, Funic able to stop Black from farming a bit. And we, I mean, don't forget Puppy that actually was... I mean, like you said, he didn't have to leave his jungle. He also didn't have to leave his jungle to try and get an assist on killing Black in the first blood. And Black is having a lot of trouble. Cooldown coming in, though. Sidran trying to help out. Sonic Wave almost kills off Black. Then he actually chases him without one more hit needed. He gets a kill in the end with the Shadow Strike. Then he running for his life. Gets back in, back in. Ends up going down for it. But worthfully so. In the meantime, Fada having a bit of trouble here. Looks like Sinner, no, able to get himself away. Awkward camera work right there as Puppy will go down from that Iron Shell. Double kill going away of Quake by Kuroki chasing now Fada still. Fada with the cold feet, but Fada will probably end up dropping. 50 HP left, they're chasing him down. Kuroki, is it enough? Needs a hit. Can he get it? That Impale will do the job. Thank you very much, Quake, by taking a lot of harassment from the creeps of Puppy, but it doesn't matter. He is lives. As well as Kuroki actually, Kuroki actually coming back from the behind there, but not able to find anything anymore. In the meantime, we do have a Vost rotating bottom. Like Lee left his lane. That's yeah, the first time. He was in the mid lane just a minute ago too. He's ah. moved around a little bit. He's finally starting to move around. He's got drums and uh, treads and an ogre club, so maybe he's just going for a BKB rush so he can stand in the middle of the fight even more effectively. And doesn't that's take what that heal debuff. It's also true. That's that's pretty big. If everybody picks up a BKB, that age separation is gonna be completely useless. Yeah, but we won't ever see five BKBs from Navi. I don't think it's pretty unlikely Chen's gonna pick up a BKB. Then he will pick I... up a BKB. He already yeah, has got the Ogre Club. Yeah, it looks like all three of them are probably gonna rush BKB. Funic might take a longer, and he may end up going for something else mm -hmm. in the long run. But I would expect Queen of Pain and Necrolite to probably end up with it at some point. And that does make things harder for mouse sports. They do do a lot of magic damage. Eventually, they'd be able to rely on Spectre for physical damage. But... Funic finds four people that are smoked, but those cogs will make sure that there's going to be a huge delay in mouse for chasing that one. Then he's still there, but he has a blink. I think he's quite happy with that. He also has a haste rune in his, in his bag, so he's really not that, that scared about this uh, advances that mouse sports is doing. In the meantime, Black, as you already pointed out, I mean, he is now even, in terms of net worth, he is behind puppy on his chin. This is a battle chin. Battle Almost. chin. His Except items don't he, really he, speak for yeah, it. Yeah, so he built mech and Arcane, yeah. so not really a battle chin. <laughs> not really a battle chin. Almost a battle chin. In terms He's of a very worth, farm chin. Yeah, in terms of that worth, he feels like a battle chin. Yeah, that? things are looking good for Navi. There you have they're leading the top three in terms of net worth. Their chin is more farm than the opposing team Spectre. That's oh, Black. Oh, feels Black. Ideal. He is actually in a lot of trouble right now. Ah, he is able to run in the end. In the meantime, Clockwork goes down on the bottom lane. They're still fighting. Cooldown coming is already used, actually. We do have a Vos in a lot of trouble. Cold Feet not proccing. He's trying to run. The Hunt comes in. Illusion already picked up by the Pulse. Nicely done. Rapid Rush not doing that much damage. Hand of God keeping a Vos up. There's another Cold Feet able to run away from that one. Fada TPs out. Dendi comes in. Kills up Sinrin. Looking for more. It will be Koifa that he wants to find. Koifa able to TP himself into safety. Black still trying to chase down a Vos. Let's see, he should be able to get this. One more hit needed, and he does get it. No. Then he can't really do anything against it. He doesn't have enough mana to do anything against it. And that's actually the first kill that Black gets. Is separation ulti coming in as well? If it hits, no it doesn't. Only the effect hits, no damage. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. 
It wouldn't have been enough to kill him anyways, but it could help Black Trang go for the kill if he had yeah. thought about it. Dendi blinks away though, so he looks like he'll be fine. And Dendi pretty close to his BKB, only about 800 gold off at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, Havost also rather close, about 700 for or 900 for him rather. So they're both going to have those those BKBs in the near future, and that's going to be looking pretty good for them. Those fights going to go a lot better, and it probably would have been fine there as well if Black hadn't been able to come in and just get that kill on Havost. They were pretty far separated at that point. Dendi was chasing down, looking for Quakefa, who had already escaped. And once you get separated, if Spectre gets the dagger on you, it's pretty difficult to run away because of the slow and she gets faster. And of course, Desolate, he's got that max, so it's doing an extra 65 pure damage if they're alone. Which really hurts that Necrolite, who's not realistically that tanky yet. Yeah, but also him, like, is very close to his BKB. Just like you said, like, about the same amount of gold away from the BKB as Dendi is actually a bit closer. And when when that is done, like when do you like? I'm thinking Navi has got this mid game, right? So when do you think is 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 those B two BKBs? Is that enough for them to go five manning to go push as the way to second? Denny with that invis rune might be able to do something here. Tower already went down. The hook shot hits upon pass ends up getting the kill for Funic as well. They look for more homing missile. Will run towards Havos. Dark Sea Roll goes on though, a nice impale coming off from Kuroki, Black in a lot of trouble, Sonic will clean him out, Sinran still standing there, but not for long, Hon back, Buyback is there as well, but oh Black, you have to be so careful, he's able to pick up Kuroki in the end with, with help of Fada obviously, it is Fada that will still have a lot of trouble actually, the haunt, he didn't haunt in, he just used haunt, didn't haunt in, wise choice, as Fada will probably die here as well. Uh, there's not really that much hope for him to stay alive here, one more hit away from dying, that's a dominating Dendi right there. And that was four heroes dead. Was it five? Did Pass die there? Five. He was five. Yeah, he was the first died, one yeah. to die. That was a complete team wipe and only losing Kuroki in return. Yeah, and if... I was going to answer your question, but I think that fight probably shows you the answer. They can five-man right now if they want. Their team fight is significantly better than what Mouseports can really throw out right now. They're completely reliant on the Ancient Apparitional. Yep. And with those BKBs, they're finished now. That's going to be fantastic for them. Black going to find a region rune, snipes it away, so then he can't pick it up. But yeah, their fight, their team fight's going to be fantastic. They're going to have these BKBs up. Havos just got his delivered, then he's probably on the way shortly thereafter, and they're going for Roshan, which is just another eight. If they get the Aegis, it's just another boon to have for their five man, because I expect them to start pushing pretty shortly. Yeah, with these Aegis, they indeed could try to just do just that. They are ahead by a lot of gold already. They are about 12k gold ahead, experience 7,500 ahead. And of course, that mostly shows in the supports that of most supports that are still very low level. Like, for example, Sinran, I already mentioned at the start that he could, in theory, be transitioning into a very nice semi carry. But, I mean, he can't take any gold right now. Every bit of farm has to go to Black. Black, we already went for our drums as well as face so he already built those items that he knows that he needs to fight early on because navi is not going to give them the peace and quiet that he wants vendetta impale black trouble here comes also necrolite that's the kill going the way of havost again he has his bkb he has the ages he's got 1400 gold already and there's only one or sorry two outer towers still left standing on mouse sports and I'm actually thinking that navi they only want to take down one extra before they try to go high ground five heroes here of navi in the mid they still have to be wary of that AA ult, though. Yeah, the AA ult still hurts pretty badly. They're gonna have those BKBs on the two cores, which are the two bigger cores, which is gonna be helpful for them. But that AA ult, it just doesn't do anything. When it only, it doesn't even hit on anyone except the creep wave. It, the, it passes over Havos, but he doesn't really care. He's got Aegis and BKB. He's just gonna keep going high ground. Yep. Or maybe they Looks still like they're, yeah, they're gonna rotate to the next bottom. Hour. Yeah. Oh well, we have gotten the, the uh, Orchid almost up on Queen of Pain as well, actually, it's on the way, no. That's something it should else. be pretty far off, yeah. And this, uh, he that just is finished far BKB. Yeah, yeah, true. BKBs are there. We've got 2500 gold almost up on Kuroki. He could go for that Blink Dagger that we know that they like on, on the uh, Nyx Assassins. But there's he a slim chance he goes for a Dagon. Yeah, so you can also go for Dagon pretty easily Yeah. and try and just get more nuke damage. It's a very effective item when you can get this early because that burst, it's hard to deal with until heroes get bigger and tankier as the fight goes on. Mossport smoked up in their own base and they're going to get spied out now quick with smoke ends. Yeah, Kuroki with a Vendetta already. 
We're looking for a target, they disrupted Danny. BKB turned on though, Sonic Wave up Fada. They know that that's the one that they have to shut down. Is it gonna be enough? Danny taking a lot of damage, but Fada taking more. Fada going down, Cinderin taking a lot of trouble as well there. He lands the cooldown and then his job is done. Kuroki will be sent home just in the nick of time. Puppy with the sent home. Very nicely done, otherwise he would have for sure gone down. He was only 50 HP when he tele got teleported home. And there's indeed the Dagon that we just mentioned up on Kuroki as well. They did end up taking down Fada, but they don't have a substantial like, fight that they can actually take the high ground with yet. Yeah, but they're fighting, they were fighting 4v5 while Havos kills bottom tower. Like, he, oh, took, yeah. he soloed the tier 2 tower in the bottom lane, just cut off the creep wave, stood there. Kept spamming death balls because Sadis lets him stand there, tank, and use death balls to just survive. So everything went fine there. Navi get a free kill in the mid lane. Havos doesn't even have to be there for the fight. And he takes the tower, the last outer tower remaining for Mouse Sports. They still have that Aegis for three-ish minutes. So probably farm up a little bit. I don't know if anyone's close to another item. Doesn't really look like it. Unless I'm missing something obvious. No, I, I think guess they're the, just gonna go. Yeah, they're probably just gonna group up. Orchid's not too far off from Queen of Pain at this now. And they have oh, a blade. Kuroki finds fast. He has a deck on there as well. One more hit. There he goes. That's a kill. And he can do that every single time. He has Vendetta, which is now already level two. So that's gonna be a very sad support. Even though, I mean, to be fair, wait a second. Dandy gets vacuumed in here, tries to totally take down Cinnamon. Oh, Missa will still chase down Puppy, but Cinnamon, a couple of hits away from dying. Blink and scream. Dandy gets a kill. Kuroki trying to help out, gets a cold feet on him though. Dark Seer Wall gets hit in the meantime, a hook shot on the back end of things. We see Kuroki going down, and that's gonna be the gem of True Set on the floor as Quickfa gets picked off by Avos, who turns on his BKB, and that's the Ice Blast not doing anything. Asia Deparation will end up going down, probably. No, Disruption will save his life from the Shadow Strike. And Avos, he has still the Aegis, so he's not too worried about dying here. And even if he was, I mean, the Tier 3 tower is taking a lot of harassment. Black can't help fighting right now, because he is standing in the base, trying to survive the harassment that came out from him earlier. And this is this is just a very confident Navi. Just Hand of God helps keeping them up. Sonic Wave. Dendi jumping forward, almost gets Sinrin again. Demonic Purge will slow him down for a little bit. Might actually be enough to force him back. Yes, he does. But he ends up still getting Sinrin with help of the Clockwork, actually. Funny coming in and with the blade mail killing off Pass as well. Really nicely done. And, uh, yeah, and it's, it's just them standing in Mouse Sports base at this point. There's yeah. just too much sustainability with this Necrolite. They're throwing out the Ancient Apparition. The debuff's there, but it's not like he was able to get Aghanims quickly. He's not even really close to it at this point. The BKBs make it so that they can't really do enough damage to kill off Necrolite and Queen of Pain. And actually, oh, now Necrolite's gonna hit some back. Yeah, Mouse, Black. Finds a courier, doesn't end up killing it off. Gets forced back, in the meantime Koifa still goes down. By the way, that's an Aghanims indeed up on uh, up on the Necrolite, who is making the courier fly back and forth, by the way, because it's in the courier. It was almost there, but then... Oh, and he walks... Oh, there he has it, thank you. Um, but yeah, he, that is the first time that a Necrolite buys an Aghanims in a competitive match. So, that is uh, pretty nicely done. You can't buy back if you die from that right now, and that's pretty tough, even though, to be fair... How many people out of mouse sports actually have buyback? Actually, Black has buyback. 1200 gold. Okay, he's just level 13. That's the reason why. The Rex already went down. In the meantime, all outer towers, of course, for mouse sports are down. Well, none towers, no towers on the side of Navi are dead. None of the tier ones. So that's a lot of miss for the supports, especially. That normally they get some solid gold through towers. If you don't get those towers, they'll be behind and they'll only rely on the gold that you get with kills and fights because they can't really take too much farm away from Black. So yeah, they're gonna try to go again. Cooldown coming down into the vacuum. A ult not really hitting apart from the aura. And Necrolite just standing there and they are able to kill a black. No buyback for him, even if he wanted to, even if he could. Phonic going down still. Fada taking a lot of damage as he goes though. As Necrolite, he doesn't have his ages anymore, has to be careful. Disruption trying to set up for killing off Kuroki perhaps. But it doesn't happen. Spike Carap is there. In the meantime, Dendi comes in on the back end of things. Fada taking a lot of damage. We'll end up going down. That's a double kill for Dendi. And Black is in the ca cage. He can't get out. He is stuck. The GG is cold. Uh, and I mean, stuck, of course, for not being able to buy back. Super strategy from Navi, apparently. It is a GG. It is Mouse Sports losing their game against Navi here in Starletter Season 6. It is day number 25. It is game number 4. And it is Navi that is just dominating all the way.
Yeah, it was a good idea by Mouse Sports. The Ancient Apparition is obviously very powerful against Necrolite, against Chen. It's like the healing strat. And the Ancient Apparition is great against it, but they just don't have enough follow up with that. And Navi are like, yeah, well, you can put Ancient Apparition ult on us occasionally, but you're, we're not going to get hit by it with our entire team. We're not going to let you get the initiations you want. And at that point, Mouse Sports just couldn't do much of anything. And again, the gyrocopter support feels like it didn't work out for them at all. No, that didn't work out at all. I mean, he landed a couple of cooldowns, but that wasn't really anything uh, spectacular. We are going to see another game of Mouse Sports, though. Right now, we're seeing if they can still get their three points in Star Ladder today. They will be up against Power Rangers. Power Rangers is doing not so good in Star Ladder, but they have been able to do some upsets. So we'll see if they can do that here as well, as Mouse Sports actually seems pretty pretty, uh, well, susceptible to upsets. The, the losses that they have are not against teams that you would expect them to lose to. So maybe Power Rangers have some luck. Power Rangers need that win to make sure that they don't stick in those bottom four of Star Series, while well, Mouse Force needs the win to stick into the top four of Star Ladder Star Series. And of course, secure their place to Kiev. They don't secure it yet if they win, but they will be a stop closer. Mouse Sports versus Power Rangers coming up for Star Letter Season 6. It is day number 25 out of 27 days. So next Friday is the last day for the group stages. And I will come back with game number 4 of today for you out of 8 games that we see today. So stick around. More than a 2 coming your way in just a moment.